turn your Bibles with me to John 13. If you have a Bible, if you don't have a Bible, um, somebody that is that has sitting with somebody next to somebody that has a Bible, can you just share, please? John 13, and I'm going to read one verse tonight, and it ties in with ties in with leading souls to Christ. It ties in with Thanksgiving. It ties in with, should tie in with everything in your Christian life today. And uh, John 13, verse 17. Mama, can you pass the ladies down there? And uh, Just one verse tonight. John 13, 17 says this. If ye know these things, happy are ye that knew them. Let's read verse 16. What are the, these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither... Uh, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. I'll read verse 17 again. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Gracious Heavenly Father, I pray tonight you just help us to remember that you are greater than us, your message is greater than ours, and your salvation is greater than all. In Jesus' name, amen. I, st I talked uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I gave you a one of Webster's Dictionary's uh, definition of the word happy. It means to be content in or to be well-being. You know, the Bible says that we're supposed to be happy people. You know, we sing a song, I'm a grumpy Christian cowboy. No, no, no. I'm a happy Christian cowboy riding down the dusty trail. I'm a happy Christian cowboy riding along. Yeehaw! With a Bible in my saddle to help me win the battle. I'm a happy Christian cowboy riding along. You know, this morning, uh, so tonight, I want to give you uh, some points on how you can maintain happiness, a state of happiness. You know, the Bible says in Psalm 144, verse 15, Happy is that people that in such a case, yea, happy is that people whose God is the Lord. You know, we oftentimes we get unhappy when we get our eyes off of God. Did I make that statement right or was I wrong in that statement? I was wrong in that statement. I said oftentimes. We're unhappy when we get our eyes off of God. All the time, we will be unhappy when our eyes get turned off of God. I learned a song in Bible college, and it goes like this. It says, I'm so happy, here's the reason why. Jesus took my burdens all away, and now I'm singing as the days go by. Jesus took my burdens all away. Once my heart was heavy with the load of sin, Jesus took it away and gave me wonderful peace within my heart, and now I'm singing as the days go by. Jesus took my burdens all away. Folks, we, we, we get unhappy when we're eyes, we, 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 we lose sight of God, when, we, when our faith is wavered, when we lose sight of our calling. Now listen to me. We are called to win souls. Yes, I would like every soul that we win in this church. I, I would. But if they live down close to Scotland and it's easier for them to go to Scotland Baptist Church, let them go there. Amen? If they're preaching the right gospel out of the right book, we're okay. Uh, if, they're, if they're in Toronto, uh, you know, I would. we sent Jennifer out to Toronto to, to Pastor Harper's church. She lives seven minutes from Pastor Harper. For, for, for Sarah to drive to Toronto an hour and 20 minutes, come back an hour and 20 minutes, and then drive back out there an hour and 20 minutes and drive back, uh, you know, that would just be unwise. She lives seven minutes from a good church. So why not? Why are we competing with other other good good old fashioned uh, uh, Baptist churches? Why do we compete? It's because we think we are greater than He, and it's got to stop. We're not going to be happy. You know, churches with a thousand people are not going to be happy until there's two thousand. Hey, well, we have two thousand people. Let's not be happy. We're not going to be happy until we're three thousand. You know, I'm happy with the, uh, the, 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 the amount of people God gave us. Because God gave us these people. Uh, our visitor tonight, I'm happy that you're here. I prayed for you all week to come. I really did. I prayed for you. Uh, I, uh, amen. And, and, and I'm glad you came. 
But my dear friends, we need to we need to just keep our eyes on God. And if we t- take our eyes off of God, oftentimes we look back at our past mistakes or other people's mistakes, and that gets us unhappy. And it's got to stop. You know, we're, we're called to, to win souls. But, and the Bible says that we're supposed to come out from among them, be separate, saith the Lord. You know, part of the separation is uh, the world is so unhappy. You ever watch people? They're so unhappy. And the sad thing is, so are Christians. What do you have to be unhappy about? Well, I got bills to pay. Join the club. Well, I got aches and pains. Join the club. Hey, I got a, a noisy neighbor. Join the club. Uh, you know, you got salvation. When you die, you're going to heaven. That's something to be happy about. I said, number one, uh, happiness, that ties, ties in. Number one, happiness is knowing that God is your Father. Do you realize not everybody, everybody in this world, God, Heavenly Father, the one that created the universe, is not everybody's Father. Because the Bible says in John 8, 44, it says, Ye are, are, ye are your Father, the devil. If they're not saved, they're not, they're not uh, God's children. They're created by God, but... They are not God's children. That came out of, by the way, that came out of the 1993, uh, 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 really, uh, before that, but the Masonry teaches that uh, monotheism, this came from 1993, uh, uh, Freemason's Guide. It says, uh, uh, monotheism is the sole dogma of Freemasonry. Belief in one God is required uh, of every uh, in, in, in innate. I, I, sorry, I, I, yeah. But his conception of the supreme being left his own interpretation. Hmm. You know, there's only one interpretation of God. He is God the Father. He created the world. He sent the God the Son to, to die on the cross and uh, to save our souls. And God the Holy Spirit seals us into the day of redemption. There's one interpretation. But there's many applications. God is God. You know, uh, so many people, they say, uh, and there's a false philosophy out there that, oh, we all worship God in our own way. and you know, It's all the same God. No, it's not all the same God. Do you realize Muslims do not worship the tr- Trinity God? Do you realize even Catholics do not worship the Trinity God? Do you realize uh, Pentecostals do not worship the Trinity God? Do you realize uh, Jehovah Witnesses do not worship the Trinity God? Do you realize we don't all worship the same God and that's a false religion, a false teaching out there that will ultimately cause people to be unhappy because they don't hear or they don't see God answering their prayers. As I said, humility and faith are the two main key ingredients for getting your prayers answered. But we, my dear friends, we need to remember that God is the Creator and that He created heaven for you and I. That all we have to do is accept Him as our Savior. You know, everybody nowadays calls themselves a Christian. How long have you been saved, ma'am? Seventy-five, and you accepted Christ as your Savior? Do you know there's a philosophy out there that everybody is born a Christian? And there's no... You know, you can... I, I have two cats. I can take my two cats down and have the priest bless them, and my cats ultimately become Christian. Hmm. No. My dear friends, we must remember the, to, the, the cross in everything we do, and we must honor that sacred symbol. And when we honor that sacred symbol, and remember that God is our Father, and we're saved, we will truly be happy. You know, my, my, my earthly father, Fred Payne, is a, he's not rich, he's not prominent, 
but he's a man of honesty and integrity. He's hardworking, and I'm honored to have him as my dad. I would do anything to help him. If he called me up tonight and says, I need you here tomorrow, son, please come. I would be, in Jesus' name, amen, I would be out of, there, out of here. Three hours, I'd be down there. I would do anything to help my earthly father. But wait a minute. Why don't we choose to do anything to help our Heavenly Father who created us and who also created our earthly Father? Hmm. Number two. Happiness, this is all brand new, happiness is knowing you have a good church home. If your church is preaching the gospel of Christ, it's a good church home. This is not a church house, this is a church home. Home is where you feel comfortable. Home is where the family gets together. It can be a storefront building, a barn, or an apartment building, a nursing home like this. It could be anything. Uh, but, but by the way, the church is not the building. We need to get rid of that philosophy. Well, the church, you have a good church building. No. We have, the church is the people. Bible says, uh, Jesus said, uh, 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 um, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. You could have church out in a, a brush arbor. When I, was, uh, when I was at Bible college, we, 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 taught, we, we learned about a brush arbor. For the, who, who does not know what a brush arbor is? It's just basically a bunch of brush in the middle of, a, in the middle of woods covering you where you can have church. And it ain't big. Nobody stands up. It's all small. But it's it, it, you can have it anywhere. You can have it in a circus tent. You can have it in a nursing home. You can have it in a... Uh, a, a you know, we, we, we thought we might have to move, move into our apartment when we moved out of our old building. Uh, you can have it there. Doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have pews. The pews don't make the, the church. It's the message that makes the church. And if you're not preaching the right gospel, it ain't a church house, it's a social house. And so we need to quit. You know, Bradford, they say it's a city of churches. No, it's not. It's not. And I hate to say it, but it's not. The church is God's sanctuary. The church is where God is lifted up. The church is where people come to get band-aids bandage when they're sick. The, the per church is where people come to get feel loved. The church is where they come to get right with God. The church has come to, to feel like to a place where they can go that they feel, that, feel uh, that they belong to something. The church is what Christ died for. One of the things that I, uh, when I, we started, my wife and I started this church many, many years ago, I wanted to be a church that preaches the gospel, but a church that loves people. Red, yellow, black, or white, they're precious in His sight. I don't care what race, color, or creed, uh, age, uh, financial status, you know, I don't care. I, I just want to love people. The church isn't, isn't, you know, we don't, when we go door knocking, we don't go door knocking in the rich neighborhoods all the time. Bible says it's harder for a man, uh, for a rich man to pass through the uh, eye of a needle. Camel, camel pass through an eye, eye of a needle than a rich man to, to enter the kingdom of God. He didn't say it's impossible, but he says it's harder. My dear friends, it don't matter if you have uh, money or not. You should feel welcome in this church. And if you don't feel welcome, I didn't do my job. I didn't, I didn't let the Holy Spirit bend and tickle your heart. What makes this, this church a home is my brothers and sisters in Christ. I may be a little prejudiced about this, but I know we have a good church home. I know we do. You feel loved? Amen. You feel loved? I hopefully you all feel loved. You know, welcome home. I think we should have just, I should every Sunday morning, welcome home. Amen. Uh, it's just a welcome home. Amen. We need to look out for another. 
one another. We need to care about one another. We need to bear each other's burdens. How do we bear them? I can't take your cane and walk with your cane or walk in your wheelchair, put, well, switch places in your wheelchair. Oftentimes, the main way we bear one another's burden is by praying for one another. You need to pray for your preacher and your preacher's wife and your preacher's kids. You need to pray for your fellow church members. You need to pray for the staff members. You need to pray for these dear residents that come week after week after week after week after week. I can count on one hand since Mrs. Pierce came uh, the first time how many services she's missed. They got a thing going on down, down, at the, down in the lounge there. Where is she? Here. Amen. She's just as much as a, a family member as anybody else. We need to look out for one another. Bear one another's burdens, as I said. Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Bear, one, bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. You know, I, I like when it says for, that we can fulfill the law of Christ. We can feel, fulfill what God tells us to do. We can fulfill what God's, you know, uh, we can fulfill God's desires. Isn't that great? You know, I I like uh, I, I remember my wife one time. She uh, she mentioned she liked um, apple the the apple cinnamon Danish from Tim Hortons, and I wanted to get her one. And I got her one. And I fulfilled something that she... Now, did she eat it? No, I ended up getting it the next day. She put it in my breakfast. But, but I, I wanted to fulfill her heart's desire. And when she went off to the Philippines last, last year, what a blessing it was to be able to see her heart's desire fulfilled. You know, we, we need to fulfill God's heart's desire. And it's a, happy, it's, it's a happy when you can say at the end of the day, you're happy... And you will be happy when you said, you know what, God, I fulfilled what you want me to do today. Hey, I'm so glad that I belong to a church. If you, if, you, know, you need to get your family under the umbrella of the local church. You need to get your protection under the local church. I wake up every morning being blessed that I am the pastor of this church. I know this firsthand that this church knows and is known for caring about one another. I know that we supply the needs for helping people, picking up people for church happily and willingly. You know, a church that does not love one another will not be a happy church. We have a, a church, a happy church will be, will be founded on and have a heart for missions. The Bible does tell us to go, go into all the world and preach the gospel to how many types of creatures? Every creature. That's through missions. We need to give God the glory. Then you'll be happy. Number three, happiness is knowing that, uh, uh, knowing, and I, I got some, three things here. Uh, Oh, no. Uh, happiness, happiness is knowing that we have the Bible as our guide. When we, when we go to Belleville or go on a trip, uh, I usually go to Belleville a couple times a year, we take a GPS with us. Tomorrow I have to go down to Delhi. I, I didn't know where Delhi was until I looked on a map. And if you're not from this area, Delhi, if you sneeze, you'll miss it. It's literally about eight blocks. I have to use a map. Well, the Bible is our road map. The Bible is our GPS. The Bible is our, is our navigator. In our Christian lives, we need, in, our, in our Christian life, in the life of any Christian, we need to have the Bible as our guidebook. Because you know what? The Bible never goes out of date. You know, I have a TomTom Tom GPS and every, uh, every few months I have to plug it in to update the maps. Well, you know what? I never have to plug this in and update it. It's, uh, it's always up to date. Amen? The Bible says, I am the Lord thy God. I change often. No, He doesn't. He says, I change not. You know, we sing a song, uh, uh, um, 
God's wonderful book divine. What light is that shining so brightly for me that gives me such courage in the right way to see? Ah, I love this. What hope for my trusting soul shall ever be? God's wonderful book divine. And I love the old Bible, the precious old Bible, the light on my pathway to shine. It makes me so happy, always so happy, God's wonderful book divine. What hope for the traveler whose strength's almost gone, that makes him determined to keep trotting on. What sweet consolation on heaven's bright white throne, God's wonderful book divine. What chart can you trust as a light for your soul? What when tempest shall strand would strand you on some dreadful shore? What compass would point you in a heaven's bright door, God's wonderful book divine? My dear friends, the Bible is your guide. If you ever had a really, you're, you felt like your life was caving in and maybe you felt like you were on a ship and the ship was going to sink and man, all you saw is just waves and clouds and you just felt nothing nothing that was, was nothing was going to go right. Well, the Bible, we, oftentimes, you, 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 I'm not going to say oftentimes, all the time when that happens, you must go back to the Bible. The Bible will calm your nerves. The Bible will sweeten your spirit. The Bible will, will help you in, in your time of need and in the time of your trials and revelation, in, in times of trial and suffering. My dear friends, even in this dark world, the Bible is our beacon. The Bible is our guide. The Bible is our protector. The Bible is our shelter. The Bible is our owner's manual. The Bible is our pre-trip, post-trip, and mid-trip inspection. The Bible should be our GPS in our Christian walk. You know, the Bible also talks about our future home in heaven. You know, depending on what version you have, you're either a room or a mansion. Now, I believe the King James Bible is the Word of God for the English-speaking people. And it says that He prepares a mansion. There's versions that say, well, He prepares a room. You know, God, I don't think, wants me to downsize when I get to heaven. I, I, I have a three-bedroom apartment. There's There's eight rooms in my apartment. Two bathrooms, three bedrooms, a dining room, a living room, and a kitchen. There's eight rooms. God doesn't want me to lower down to one room. Amen. I get a mansion of my own for me. Doesn't that make, should that make you happy? Not really. I'll be alone. No, you won't be alone. Oh, I'll be with that Christian that I really don't like. You'll like him anyways in heaven. You know there's people that get under your skin and you get under their skin. And the more happier you are, the less they'll get under your skin. And if you get under their skin, that's their problem. But if you be happy and you be joyful and you just keep going, you just keep trudging on. And by the way, if you trudge on happily, it ain't going to seem like a trudge. It's going to seem like a sweet, sweet walk. Monday morning, we're going to go to Apps Mill and see the, 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 the leaves change color. I love that walk. I, can, I mean, we walk all the way down the one end. We cross the road, cross the creek, come back down, and come down all the other end. And, man, it's a beautiful walk. One year, we even walked through the water. Not on the water, through the water. That was stupid. But we walked through the water, and we had a good time. You know, I'll tell you something. Uh, when uh, the, the pathway of our Christian life and our Christian walk, it doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are, it can be a sweet spring-stepped walk. You can have a joyful walk in the Lord. If you just remember what the promises of the Bible have in store for you, you can't help but to be happy once in a while. You know, a Christian who often is not happy because they often do not read their Bible often. Often and often. Lots of oftens. You know, the, the more you spend, in, the more time you spend in the Bible, the more, the happier you will be. 
I like reading uh, often reading the 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 the, the, the books of the first books of Genesis, first few books of Genesis where God created the world. And then I like to see the, 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 the wonderful glory of, of, of the trees, and especially now. The, you know, some of the tree is red leaves, and then there's green leaves, and then there's yellow leaves, all in the same tree. Wow, what a blessing. And realize who made that. And realized who made that made me. And who's interested in me. And who wants to hear what I have to say. And who loves me unconditionally. And who protects me and guides me and provides for me. That makes me happy. I said number, number four. Happiness is knowing that we can serve God with our lives. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what that which prove that which is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. How do we renew our minds? Not by watching. TV or reading magazines. I don't care even if it's the news or sports or whatever. We only renew our minds by getting into the Bible and by praying and asking God to help us think like Him. You see, that's impossible to have the mind of Christ. The Bible tells us, it says, let this mind be in you, which is in Christ Jesus. So, can will God tell us, give us a command that's impossible for us to do, Mrs. Payne? No. He will not. Any command He gives us, He gives us the power or a way to, to tap into the power to have that. Doesn't the Bible say, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth? Doesn't it? Well, if God has all the power, and wants us to have the pa have his mind. Why are we live Christians living such a powerless life? Why are our prayer lives powerless? Why is our service powerless? Why is our day to day living powerless? Because we're not being excited the fact that God wants to use you. You know, you you ask for prayer for souls to be saved. Do you know? Realize everybody in here has somebody that only they can win to Christ. Do you realize that? I tried to win somebody for Christ by for years, and I couldn't win them. But a friend of mine did. I couldn't. Man, I tried everything, but a friend of mine did. My dear friends, many people who accept Christ and get baptized and join the church, but then they stop and they sit in the pew and they don't serve. Maybe, sure, they'll put a few bucks in the place, but they never serve. Unfortunately, 90% of what service goes on in churches is done by 5% of the people there. Well, that's what we pay the pastor for. You know, Jim, you, you went and got people. He didn't, well, I gotta go get people. He, man, he did it with joy. Joy. Sarah came back and said, you guys were coming. I sent her over there to see who was coming. And she, with joy, came back and gave the report. I know everybody cannot be a preacher or may never even teach a class, may never have a beautiful voice to sing songs, but everybody, I'm going to say everybody, can serve God in some, in some capacity. Mrs. Pierce, one of the greatest servants in this church. You are. You're one of the greatest servants in this church. She's always happy to be here. A happy person, no matter if they smile and shake a hand, they are the greatest servants in the church. Because they're doing it with joy. Serve the Lord with what? Gladness. Well, I've got to come and I've got to do this, and the pastor wants me to do that. You ever walked into a church and had to... Uh, I went to visit a church one time, and they didn't know... The, the pastor the pastor didn't tell them I was coming to preach. There's a guy standing in the back, 
I'm kind of standing in the back just waiting for somebody to shake my hand. Preacher's standing in the back and her preacher's uh, up at the front and a couple of his supposedly doormen, door greeters were griping about certain things. I passed them, they sat down, nobody shook my hand, never got a bulletin, never got nothing. And by the way, if they looked in the bulletin, they would have seen my face. And they, they said, preacher, we'd like to, I'd like to have this preacher come up and preach for us. And I got up. You should have seen the look on those guys' face. Nobody likes a grumpy person. Especially when they're serving God. <coughs> Man, you can't serve the Creator. Your boss is a Jewish carpenter. Amen? I drive school bus and I have I had a bumper sticker on my old car and it says, My boss is a Jewish carpenter. Some bus driver goes, oh, I didn't know my, uh, George was Jewish. And I just started laughing. And I told him that, and he started laughing. But my dear friend, it doesn't matter how you are. The difference between somebody serving God and somebody not serving God is, is the same as a sparkling mountain stream and a stagnant farm pond. It's the flow. Flow. You ever listened to a farm pond? What sound does it make? It does. You ever listen to a babbling mountain brook? It makes a beautiful sound. The Bible says we're supposed to make a what type of jo noise? Joyful noise or a happy sound. A, uh, so why don't we do that? Folks, determine tonight to be a sparkling mountain and stream, not a stagnant pond, farm pond. You know, a stagnant farm pond, you know what, you know what bacteria is in that? You know, the, 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 the uh, what are they called, mosquitoes? And, you, and in a mountain stream, you see the big pike and rainbow trout, and you just, largemouth bass, and you just grab them and get your hand. It's a great joy serving God. Are you willing to be a volunteer today? Number six. Happiness knowing the home we have prepared for us. Turn your Bibles, please, to John 14. He should already be there because, well, I was there a few verses earlier. John 14, verse 2 and 3. In my Father's house there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you and where I, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Doesn't that excite you? When you take your last breath, your heart stops, and, and, and you hear, well done now, good and faithful servant, Lord willing, or come on in, whichever one, however you've been, you get a stroll through your mansion. You get to walk on the streets of gold. Hey, there's no more sin. There's no more backbiting. There's no more suffering. There's no more aches. There's no more pains. There's no more cancer. There's no more uh, whatever. And you know what? The lease never runs out. It is yours forever. There are a lot of people that are going to die and go to hell. But those who are not going there that are saved, you have the joy of knowing that you can be saved. Or that, you're, that, you're, that uh, your home is in heaven. But those who do not know, you have the joy of knowing that you can be saved. And you can have that home in heaven. And you can have that mansion and you can be with the Savior. And you can be with, 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 with all the great saints in the Bible. I'm thinking, man, I want, to, I want to talk to Adam and Eve. 
They walked the, the litter. They heard the voice of God. I want to talk to Moses saying, Moses, man, what did you feel? How did you feel when the, 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 the armies were coming after you? I want to talk to... You know who I also want to talk to? I want to talk to the centurion that says that said at the end when Jesus Christ took his last breath, truly this was, this is the Son of God. I believe he's saved. I believe we're going to see him in heaven. I want to talk to him. Hey, I, I, I want to talk to, I want to talk to, 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 to Aaron and, and Ruth and Naomi. I want to talk to all these great saints. I want to talk to John and, and Peter and Mark. I want to talk to all these folks. Hey, I also get to see my brother and sister in heaven. I get to see my two children in heaven. I get to see my mom and dad in heaven. I get to see you folks in heaven. I mean, I'll tell you, I can't wait. When I get to heaven, I'm going to walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, I'm going to see his face. Hey, ain't going to be a suffering Lamb of God. Can you imagine the first church service in heaven? With the angel choir singing behind the pulpit, and men, and then uh, well, I don't know what song they're going to sing. Maybe he lives. And then Jesus Christ stands up who needs no introduction behind the pulpit. And we are with the living Bible. Isn't that amazing? Man, we're not going to worry about who we're sitting beside. We're not, not going to worry if our, if our pew is comfortable or not. We're not going to worry if, if uh, how close we get. You know, there's people worrying about the marriage supper of the Lamb, who, who's going to sit the closest with Jesus. How dumb. I don't think Jesus is going to be sitting down. I think he's just going to be talking around, going around visiting everybody. You know, my wife, she's a great hostess. And when we have people over, she very rarely sits. Amen? She, she serves. And I believe Jesus is going to be the, the best host. And he's just going to go around and talk with everybody at the marriage supper. Man, I'll tell you something. I, yeah, it's going to be amazing. Doesn't that excite you? No, not really. Well then, restore unto me the what of thy salvation? The joy of thy salvation. Do you remember when you first got saved? Man, everything, you thought you could charge hell with a squirt gun. Get that joy back. And by the way, I believe the happier you are, the more God will use you, and in turn the more happier you'll be, which in turn the more God will use you, which, you get the point here? Happier Amen. You want to be used of God? How many people here have never won a soul to Christ? Raise your hand. Never face to face won somebody. How many people have won a soul to Christ face to face? Sister, what's your? Hold on. Uh, sister, can I call you Mary? Sister Mary, was it joyful that when you won somebody to Christ? Or do you like, oh, what do you know? Who was the first person? Do you remember the name? Um, a little lady that our Lord on the phone, and Bessie. Bessie. Amen. 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 You know, I'll tell you something. It's a great feeling when you win somebody to Christ. It's a great feeling that you can share what your home is going to be like. I, you know, if I get the time, when I win somebody to Christ, I get the time afterwards, I tell them what, they, what their home in, in heaven is like. You know why? I want them to be excited to go tell somebody else right away. I led, I led somebody to the Lord in Chicago. Floor was her name. And Floor, I, I told her, I said, Floor, you know, man, uh, I told her about her, about her home in heaven and that. And, and she says, she said, Preacher Ken, she grabbed my arm and she dragged me down the street. you got to tell all my neighbors and all my relatives. I went and I, man, I went house to house. The whole Saturday, I literally went one block. Because I went from house to house winning souls to Christ. I called my bus captain. I said, I said Brother Dave, we are in trouble tomorrow. He said, what are you talking about? I said, we, I don't have the money to rent another bus. One of the, I said, I've got 72 people in one 
block coming to church tomorrow. Somebody overheard that and says, how much does a bus cost? And I said, Brother Dave, how much does a bus cost? He said, I think it was 150 bucks or something like that. I said, 150 bucks. He says, there you go. He says, 150 bucks is amazing to, to pay so I can go and follow Christ and believers' baptism and so can my friends. Everybody. There wasn't, there wasn't dry hair in, the ch in that bus. Wow! And you know why? You know why they got excited? It's because I, that little girl, I told her about her home in heaven. After she got saved, I told her about her home in heaven, and she just, she went, she held my hand. We went from door to door to door to door to door to door, and just winning souls to Christ. That's that's happy. I couldn't sleep that night, man. I was, I was, my my roommate. I think he thought I was bouncing on his. Uh, I, I had lower bunk. He had the top bunk. Man, I was I was jumping. I was a jumping bean. I was so excited. I come back, man. I said, man, I man, we just won soul after soul after soul after soul. And those who didn't get saved the first day, they got saved in church the next day, and they walked the aisle to get baptized. Hello, that's exciting. You see, that can't happen here. With God, all things are possible. Do you know it's possible on Sunday morning this whole room is packed out? It's so it's possible, and and we we got stack of visitors card that much since people coming here, since us starting here. Sure, a lot of residents are here, but they're coming here because they like what's being preached. They like the gospel. They like the preaching. They like the old fashioned stuff. It makes them happy. Get the new look from the old book. Happiness is knowing that we have our home in heaven. Happiness, true happiness comes from God and only Him. God is the only thing that won't fade away, my dear friends. I'm going to say this and I'm going to be done. Our home in heaven will not decay. The gifts that God gives us will not, will not rust and fall apart. God's love is the only love that is unconditional. God's peace is the only peace that will last. God's happiness is the only happiness that will that can't be taken away. His treasures will not be ruined. The Bible says in, in Matthew 6, verse 19 and 20, it says, Lay not up your treasure of treasure of your own selves treasures upon earth where moths where moth and dust, dust rust doth corrupt. And it goes on where Thieves break through to, and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust nor uh, doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through to steal. My dear friends, we must determine to be happy and determine what is most important in our lives. And we need to invest that in God. You know, are you happy today? Are, are, are you happy? Do you know God is your Heavenly Father? Hey, are you excited about your future home if you're saved? Are you excited enough to go tell somebody about it? Do you know the fastest growing religion, uh, organi religious organization in Canada is? It ain't Christianity. It's Muslim. They are now going to knocking. That's sad. And if they can get excited about what they're peddling, why can't we get excited about our thing? All most religions is based on if you're good enough, if you've done enough to get to heaven. But true biblical Christianity is based on what He has done. And it is enough. What was the last three words he said on the cross? Anyone know? Hannah? It is what? It is what? Finished. It's done. It's complete. That word finished means complete. Can't add to it. You and I need to stop trying to find other happiness and try to find happiness in people. No. Hey, try to find happiness in education. No. Hey, try to find happiness in money. No. 
Try to find happiness in the affection of others. No. The only true happiness can be found in God. Why don't we just start getting happy? How many people know people that are going to die and go to hell? Raise your hand. You may not win them by telling them immediately the Romans are or a plan of salvation or whatever you want to call it. You may have to be happy first for a while. Be happy in Christ first for a while. And then they might listen. You happy tonight? Our gracious Heavenly Father, I ask you tonight to help us to be happy in you, that we might be used of you, that we might be able to be happy more, that we might be able to see more souls saved. Lord, I pray tonight that if there's some here tonight, that maybe there's just something in their lives that they're just not happy. It's just blocking their happiness. I pray that they would give it to you tonight. And Lord, I pray when we get unhappy that you would restore in us the joy of thy salvation and help us to realize what you have in store for us. And when we do that, our journey to that promised land will be sweeter and more productive. In Jesus' name, amen.